welcome in, welcome back to the channel. I'm at home, y'all. I know y'all recognize this car. This is my uh, 2012 Journey. Well, my daughter drives. Oh, by the way, y'all, if uh, y'all have female friends or wives, girlfriends, things like that, that need some lashes, tell them to click on uh, www.lashmejazzy.com. Okay? Uh, she's a part owner of a lash company. They got a real good product on there as far as eyelashes. All right, well, anyway, this is the vehicle she drives. Now, y'all remember, let me get inside. Y'all remember, uh, about a month ago, I did that video on the battery where I went out to check it and test it. And uh, it failed. Well, it didn't really fail, but the battery was bad. And I panicked, like we always do when our significant others are in trouble, such as our wife or daughter or things like that. So I panicked and simply went out and bought a battery. This is all done without testing the old battery. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it was my car or if it was my daily vehicle, then yeah, I would have, uh-uh, I ain't spending no money on battery. Let me go find out this one bad. Okay, I went through with that video. Uh, Y'all remember I went to Walmart and uh, uh, logged in the Walmart machine and got their battery. Now, granted, somebody brought that to my attention that that was the wrong battery. Now, I don't know the size by heart of the battery, the size that is, like the physical size, how big they are. Uh, from a journey to any other car so I don't know that now a guy brought that to my attention that uh, Walmart machine where you punch in the information and tell you the battery was wrong all right and it looked wrong because the battery looked like a little PT Cruiser battery it was very small but anyway I went through with it anyway and ended up putting it in the car because I was pressed for time that's neither here nor there well anyway guys I got the battery in the car all right um of course, I'm happy. I shot a video. I got some more footage, got some material. And above all, I was able to speak to my subscribers concerning the situation. So, yes, I even got to the point where I was able to show you guys how to install a battery on such a car like this. The battery was in the uh, left side fender well. Okay. Well, we got that on. Uh, I'm happy. Like I say, I'm take the car home. Here you go, daughter. Be careful from now on. You know, you got you a new battery. <laughs> Lo and behold, two days later, uh, same problem. Guys, let me tell you, the same problem. She come out here with a key, and uh, I'm trying to get the sun out of your face. Put the key, or don't even put the key. It's a push button right here. So she push the button, and it'll say key not detected. Okay, as if the battery in the remote was uh, dead or the system was dead so she called me again y'all I'm, now i'm pissed because i'm in panic mode i just put a battery in that car now granted uh y'all know the machine we have at our job uh it's called gr8 we're able to test the battery fully test the battery i mean deep cell charge and fully test the battery okay well guys let me tell y'all this well i'm gonna tell y'all after the ad break all right stay tuned don't go anywhere i'll be right back all right, all right guys i'm back thanks for staying with me actually uh i'm filming on my cell phone i had a phone call but in a good way guys where did i leave off uh the battery let me tell y'all about the battery that i took out of the car um uh, it wasn't bad y'all it passed my gr8 special test it passed i mean it deep sailed to charge the battery back up to specs and it ran the cold cranking app test and it passed so i'm going wait a minute did i just waste money uh in actuality i did because obviously there was nothing wrong with the battery i took off but remember guys like i say we all like this we all are guilty of this when it comes to our loved ones sometimes we lose our normal train of thought i just had to get her up and running and then want her driving with fear of the car not starting okay now we got that out the way uh two negatives on that whole everything i just said one there was nothing wrong with the freaking battery and two a waste money on another battery all right now let's get to the root cause of everything guys so what do i do after that after i get the second phone call i'm at work naturally i get on the uh on a uh on a database on my search database where i get most of my information from uh that's a top secret y'all i can't tell y'all that but listen what I found out is all the complaints about a particular car like such as this Dodge Journey of people complaining about the car 
will not start after two days of sitting. Uh, like a draw on the system, okay? So that was the last thing I need to deal with is a draw on a system as complex as this one where there's gazillion modules everywhere. It's always to find, always hard to find a uh, draw on cars or system like this, guys. Oh my God, I was like, God, please don't let it be something crazy like that because you know what, you got to pull fuses and see if you draw a lead. That's a headache. But well, let me tell y'all what I found, guys, so y'all won't make this mistake. Uh, and it's not just Dodge Journeys, any car. All right, let me show y'all something. Pay attention with me, all right? Now, these little lights up here, okay? Notice, uh, in the daytime, sun is, sun is booming, such as now. This little light can be on, right? And especially this one, you on the driver's side, you don't see that one. That light can be on, or this one can be off. So if you over here in the driver's seat, you don't notice that this one is still on. So you go home, you park the car, go in the house about your married business, and you think that's that. Now, uh, let me tell you about how smart some of these computers are. There's a likely chance that these interior lights are controlled by the body controller, BCM. All right, now the BCM, after a certain length of time, would simply go to sleep. Just shut everything down, supposedly. It's supposed to shut everything down. Okay, we call it in the dealership world, uh, idiot proof. Well, it don't matter if you leave something on or not. The computer's gonna shut everything down. Now, that may be true, okay, unless there's a fault with the BCM, which should give off a fault code. I had no such fault code. All I had was battery low fault code. All right, so, now let me get on with it. Uh, now, see, like this light is on. Like I say, if it's daytime, you're not gonna see that or notice that. You're gonna get out your car now. If the computer's doing their job, like I say, it should shut everything down. Now, let me show you another issue. This switch right here, uh, part of the headlight switch. Okay, if this on, it's rotary. So if it's all the way up, the lights, interior lights come on, okay? I'm rolling it down now, interior lights go off. I'm rolling it up, interior lights go on, okay? So you can't, if that switch is on, you can't even override this. See, it doesn't matter. All right, so think about this for a second, all right? Um, wow, I'm up to three minutes again, guys. Let me go to another break, guys. I will be right back to finish this story. I want y'all to stay with me, guys. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for staying with me. All right, here's where we left off at. This rotary switch, rotary switch off all the way up on. Matter of fact, you're going to feel a little indention, like a little switch. As I do that... You can see the lights go on and off. Well, I have it on now, so let me turn it off. Now, watch as I do this. On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Okay, now, like we mentioned earlier, it's likely there's a likely chance that the BCM was turn these off uh, due to the powers that the BCM has over the interior or over the lighting system inside the car. It likely has that type of powers. I don't know about hard. I'll have to look this up, but I'm basing it off uh, basic knowledge. Okay, it should have that powers. Let me put it that way. Now this car also have a RFH module. Okay, but here's what I want to point out, guys. Um, let's say it's daytime. Your significant other get home. Both of these are off. All right, but just say one night uh, in question she had this on. It's on. Now, see, the weird thing about this, guys, you can't turn these off even with the switch all the way up. Okay, unless they power down and the lights stay on. Okay, so the BCM or any kind of module have no way to electronically turn off a rotary switch. Okay, because think about a switch is when once you close the circuit, it's almost like physical closing it. All right, so I don't think a computer has those type of powers to uh, interrupt that circuit unless it's spliced into it. That part I'm not sure. Okay, I'm trying to analyze this out in my head as I speak on this because the problem is fixed, first of all. Let me explain that to you. Uh, I simply got in the car, guys. Uh, I looked over here. Yes, this was on. This one was off, but like I say, if you're in the driver's seat, you're not gonna know if this one on or not, unless it's dark, you might see a little light. So that was on. And also, guys, this 
rotary switch was all the way up. All right. All right. So I get in the car and start looking around like I'm confused. Like I'm looking around like what in the world could it be now? So I come to the conclusion once I felt this second indention all the way up. In other words, I got in the first thing I did was go up with it. I pegged out. I can't go no more, which tells me that this rotary switch was on. Just simply left on. Now, I'm not sure this is the only, in fact, it's not. Okay? If you look behind me, that switch controls those lighting. Like I say, guys, if it's daytime, nobody can see those lights. So there's a likely chance that this physical switch, rotary switch, had lights on. And there's some more, there's some more lights even in the doors that could be on. Okay? So the moral of the story is, guys, you don't... Unless you run a hardcore draw test, uh, you may not have to, first of all. Uh, get inside, man, like the old days. I remember the old days, guys, some of you mechanics, where uh, most of our draw was coming from the glove box. You can just slightly pull that down and see it lit inside. That way you knew the glove box light was staying on. That was the biggest problem with off-draw problems in the, on the older cars. That little switch right there. It was always stuck down and the light would stay on. Run the battery down. Okay, the BCM even had control over that. Presumably, presumably, I think. Okay, it would shut that off in a timely fashion, even if it's left on. That's why we call it idiot proof. You can leave that down and go in the house, come out the next morning, that light is out and your car still starts. Likely because the BCM powered everything down interior wise, or they supposed to, to prevent the ignition off draw problem. Okay, but like I said earlier, I don't think it physically has control over a physical switch that's has the contact physically closed okay unless that bcm has a wire going you know spliced into the circuit that's probably the only way and i'm not sure how you would do that so that's that's the part that's the only thing i can come up with okay yes this was on so there's a likely chance with this being all the way up uh the battery went down simple as that there's no other way because three days later uh, she worked from home. You know, they quarantined. The job got them working from home. So the car haven't moved in three days. Three days later, I go out there, push the button, boom, boom, everything back to normal. So that tells me when I came out here three days ago and took that off automatic mode, in fact, I tell her now, just leave it all the way down. All the way down. In the middle is dimming. You dim in the interior or the cluster and things like that. Just keep it all the way down. Unless you need it to turn your interior lights on, that's the only reason you should turn that up. Never leave this all the way up, guys. There's a likely chance that you're gonna pull all your power down overnight and you're gonna wake up in the morning and your battery dead, okay? So I'm not a big fan of this switch by no means. Uh, also, auto, <laughs> I mean, you can use it. It's there for the taking, but for the most part, uh, because we're human, guys. We forget to do undo the things that we've done. Okay, so I yabbled enough, man. I just wanted y'all to give y'all a uh, heads up. So I got a known good battery at my shop that fits this car. And uh, matter of fact, the correct battery. Like my man said, I'm, I'm going to put his name in the description. I appreciate that, buddy. Whoever corrected me on telling me that the battery that I got out of Walmart was wrong for this size car, car I appreciate it. Uh, Walmart need to get better and they need to do better on their uh, equipment. All right. So I'm going to wrap this up, guys. I just wanted to give y'all a heads up on that. Uh, it might help somebody. Anybody that has cars, like I said, it doesn't have to be a Dodge Journey. It can be anything with these fancy and all these computers. It's it's like up to 20 some modules on this car. In fact, the door, each door has its own module. So everything is computerized, guys. Nothing is simple anymore. So. Guys, inform your female friends, your lady friends, your wife. Man, just leave that off and leave this in the off position. That's the safest way. This car, we we haven't had to jump this car off in the last week now. Uh, only from those simple adjustments. All right, that's all I have, man. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all on the next video.